Okay, this one's going to be uh, amp repair sequence for dummies. Nothing deep here. You know, if you're a tech, uh, this is nothing for you. This is, you know, to try to help somebody who uh, is inexperienced and doesn't really know what they're doing with amps. I hope it helps people. And be careful. You know, tube amps can kill you. You got high voltage on there. And high voltage jumps, arcs, it'll stop your heart. It will kill you. So be careful with that. So anyway, with that disclaimer said, this one, I'm just going to do a kind of a walkthrough uh, of how I go about uh, testing and refurbing and trying to get an amplifier working at present this Mohawk Dual 60 my uh, next amp on the bench is not working correctly so uh, before I fired it up again I replaced the caps new electrolytics right there check the diodes which are those white guys under there back in the old older days this amp was uh, I think the schematic said 63 1963 uh, some of the diodes were white instead of black with the uh, stripe on them so check my diodes they were good uh, those blue resistors there are the bleeders replace my bleeders uh, recapped it um, also on this old amp these little spade connectors there you can see the two on the uh, left are really bad um, so what I did I soldered those in those are all soldered in instead of just spade connectors just a few more around the amp this amp used a lot of spades so um, you know just seeing some of them lose some of them broken this amp would have never worked right like that so uh, most of the spade connectors are now soldered right to the board on the solder side of the board so you know even though that looks funky those are soldered in those are good to go right um, so after I did all that uh, uh, recapped it got my bleeders in checked my diodes uh, soldered my spade connectors um, you know cleaned my relays checked the fuse this one didn't have a fuse in it it required a 5 amp fuse put a fuse in it um, got my variac out and slowly very acted up and uh, everything was okay as far as the watts um, actually is plugged in now and on standby and this thing is pulling 50 watts in standby which is about right uh, you know two tubes the filaments going you get some transformer loss even in uh, standby with uh, no uh, power on the output you get some loss with through the transformer so 50 watts is about right nothing happening bad there um, so after I get voltage to it uh, one of the first things I do is um, I look to see if the filaments are lit up see if I got the orange there you can see the orange under there filaments looked up uh, are good that's good um, before I do the high voltage or anything else, I got it on standby. I see if I get feed through watts. So that's my watts in. I got a lot less going out, but I got lost because it's going through so many things. But anyway, I'm good there. I got input watts, output watts. Um, my SWR with feed through is 1.2. So uh, everything's okay right now so far. Um, so next thing we do is we take it off standby put it on operate and see if the thing is keying down see if the keying circuit is working right so you can hear it I don't know if the count there you go that's a better angle you can see the relay kicking in all good there right however there's my in watts there's my output watts no output watts whatsoever tune and load did nothing right um, so one of the things I always check is check your input SWR when you're keyed down so now my input SWR is about 1.2 1.3 probably 1.3 if I stop talking this one does have an input tuner um, so we could tune that but 1.3 is good right um, so my in, my watts I'm assuming are getting to the tubes because I have a good input SWR. Um, if my input SWR, this is a watt meter in between the radio and the amplifier, and it measures SWR, so I'm measuring the SWR in between 
the radio and the amplifier. I've had several people tell me how can you measure input SWR if the amp is not putting out and I kinda you know shake my head a little bit and I go no input SWR measures the SWR or the watts in between the radio that watt meter goes from it comes from the radio into that uh, digital watt meter there into the amplifier and the reason I use this as a test radio is I can automatically measure my input SWRs when I'm messing with the amplifier um, if you got a radio with the built-in SWR meter you can use that it doesn't have to be an external one a radio's built-in SWR meter you can use it to measure input SWR and that works even if the amplifier is not putting out because you're measuring the watts that are going into the amplifier you know this is a grounded grid amplifier you're measuring the the watts and the SWR that are um, for the uh, cathode where the watts are going into the tubes at that's the input SWR which um, you're measuring with the input SWR again that SWR is in between the radio and the amplifier and that's good amp keying up input SWR is good you know I got the orange glow on the plate and I say okay no output next I'm gonna measure the high voltage I'm not gonna do that live but I had my meter out and I measured my high voltage on top of the tubes and that's good I'm getting 850 volts DC be careful if you're gonna do that um, got uh, got my high voltage is good um, so next thing I did is um, I checked my watt meter over here this is my line level my AC uh, watts or amps coming in I got it on watts and again in standby it has 50 watts now if the uh, amp is getting drive and all that to the tubes it should pull a lot more watts when I key it down than 50 right so we're gonna key it down and that watt meter jumps up to a couple hundred watts right so I'm going for 50 to a couple hundred watts that's telling me that these watts are going to the tubes my tubes have voltage they have uh, amps or watts is um, basically voltage times amps so I got watts going out the tubes it's pulling watts you know on my line it's pulling watts somewhere but I got nothing out again right so all that tells me you know my inputs good I'm getting watts to the tubes I got you know the high voltage and all that is pulling watts out the amplifier but I got nothing on the watt meter nothing at all zero right so my problem pretty much has to be by the process elimination is somewhere from the output of the tubes through the tank circuit over here to the relay that's the uh, key down relay and then out to the coax some somewhere around there from the relay to that tank circuit is my problem and the most usual suspect is something mechanical and what's mechanical there and the usual suspect is a dirty relay or a bad relay but this one's keying in so I'm saying the relay is not bad necessarily but I'm thinking this might be the usual problem is it's not getting a good contact right so anyway it's gonna be a little trickier than I hoped holding the camera with one hand gonna key down the mic with another hand I should use the mic to lock but anyway keying down the mic I'm keyed down with zero watts and I'm gonna push in the output side of that relay right here with this tube brush okay I'm pushing in and out with that tube brush like this going off it on it off and on it and you can see my watts going up and down right there that is the one of the most common and usual problems when you get an amp where you got voltage um, it seems to be pulling the tubes are getting hot um, you got a good input SWR but the amp ain't doing nothing it won't put put, put out it could be the tank circuit you know you're tuning low or bad wire or something there something shorted there something open or even your blocking capacitor but usually when that goes um, 
you got a little bit more serious problems usually but more often than not probably four out of five when I mean, you got an amplifier where the tubes are getting hot like they're supposed to you're pulling watts on the watt meter like this one is when you key down if you have a inline watt meter and if you don't and you want to work on amps I suggest you get one but anyway another way to tell if the tubes are getting hot uh, you can't tell it but I can feel the heat from the tubes as I'm sitting and especially if I put my hand over there that little two tube amplifier is getting hot because again um, I keep keying it down with no watts so those tubes are eating those watts every single watt that that um, that high voltage and all that is producing that 200 watts right there 150 of it you know some of them are going to light the filaments and all that but 150 watts instead of going out those tubes are eating those watts and those tubes are getting hot you could feel that um, as a kid I felt around too close and almost killed myself with the arc so you know be careful with all that you know I'm using this insulated long tooth brush to keep myself away and again I just poked on this relay and ta-da, I got what? So I'm just going to go back in and uh, re-clean that relay and adjust it to make sure my legs are right. And uh, I should be good to go. Um, and that's untuned because, you know, I wasn't getting any watts. So I haven't tried to tune it up or load it. But I'm getting watts when I poke in. So I got a bad contact on the relay there. So I guess the last part of this is... The most common thing that go bad in amplifiers are mechanical. Something that moves. Something that's physical that's actually moving. Relays, you know, they open and close every time you key them down. You got bad contacts, uh, dirty contacts, metal fatigue. You got a got lot going on, you know, every time you key this thing down. Um, relays are one of the most common problems with um, amplifiers not putting out uh, stuff like a Phantom 500 uses like four of them you know input output relay high voltage relay high low side relay uh, some of them have the watts going through a um, receive preamp relay um, it has got a bunch of relays in there and goodness knows how to figure out you know one of those ain't working but again use, using your tricks with the input SWR and all that are the tubes getting hot you know if they are you know you probably got power going in somewhere the driver tubes getting hot if they are you probably got power going to them are the final tubes getting hot if they are probably power going to them it's just not putting out if they're not getting hot they're losing the power somewhere but anyway relay is a very very common problem with them um, and again even though I clean that one and burnish the uh, contacts on it for some reason I'm not getting uh, power on the output of that relay and that's the problem with this but anything mechanical you know relays move switches you know you turn them off and on it's the same thing they got contacts similar to a relay inside of them it's just you mechanically move them in a switch where a relay, the uh, electromagnetic here, moves it up and uh, in and out or closes it and opens it, right? So uh, switches, which, you know, have movement inside of there, another common problem with uh, amplifiers. Um, anything mechanical, pots, potentiometers that, you know, you got an internal wiper in there that wipes across the... Um, potentiometer um, you know you got a contact in there it moves it wears out it goes bad also not as much but even um, variable caps here air variable here um, this here is the hot side both of them and the ground is actually on this one uh, goes through that little finger contact there and then it's grounded over here to the case right that little finger contact, you know, over time, over years, it gets loose. Um, then you're not getting the good ground, not getting the good connection. Um, you get arcs and spurs in there um, in the contacts, especially the closer ones. Um, they go bad. Anything mechanical goes. Not saying it has to be, right? Because I've always said, change your caps. This is uh, one of the electrolytic caps out of this uh thing originally and as you can see that thing has blew its guts it's bad um, 
these go bad with age the uh, electrolyte in them dries up and uh, they go bad and I never fire up an old amp until I at least change the um, electrolytic caps resistors go too um, even though these resistors look good over time these carbon resistors especially um, they absorb moisture and they go high uh, they tend to go high they can go open uh, too totally open but they tend to go high that's 100k I think the uh, bleeders in here were reading about 115 125 a little bit all over the place so you know replace them but more common than not the most common thing of why an amplifier seems to be you know lighting up you get feed through watts uh, everything working no output usually a relay in there all right that's it for this one hope it helps somebody again be careful don't kill yourself you know I almost did as a kid I was about 12 um, playing with a black hat JB 150 um, in there it was um, same problem heating up tube getting hot um, but back then I didn't know you know what arc was 12 years old and uh, that thing that uh, little amp arced and almost killed me um, I was knocked out for a couple hours I woke up uh, I couldn't open one hand even using the other hand uh, it took me uh, hours to recover from that thing all right that's it for this one got a little longer than I uh, wanted to but hopefully it helps somebody bye